These sarcophagi really blow me away every time I look at them. I hope you enjoy the video of these amazing pieces of art. Hello, today I would like to show you the ancient Roman sarcophagi collection in the Walters Art Museum in Baltimore, Maryland, USA. This is one of the finest collections of ancient Roman sarcophagi I've ever seen in one place outside of Turkey or Italy. First, let's start off with some background information. Ancient Romans almost always cremated their dead until the second century AD. We don't know why there was a sudden change then, although this sarcophagus with the preserved epitaph of Lucius Cornelius Scipio Barbatus, who was consul in 298 BC, is a notable exception. It is rather interesting as the ancient Greeks and Etruscans, from whom the Romans absorbed much of their culture, both cremated, here an example of a new Etruscan urn, and also buried their dead for many centuries. Here is an example of the most celebrated Etruscan sarcophagus. Depending on the family's wealth and the former culture, the choices range from simple coffins out of various easy-to-find materials, including clay, to large stone sarcophagi with the necropolis or precinct. Fast forward to later in the second century AD, and you will find these in sepulchres or tombs that align with their customs on worshiping the dead. Roman tombstones or grave altars, which sometimes had fancy portraits of the deceased, were surpassed by large, elaborate scenes involving classical mythology or Christian motifs, which were carved by some of the best workshops in the empire. These marble masterpieces, seven of which you will see in detail, are some of the finest works of Roman art that still survive to this day, and they allow for a comparison of Roman sculptural styles through several centuries. With their incredible details, high reliefs, imagery, and dazzling impact with light and shadows, they never cease to amaze me. Instead of going through a long history lesson with you now, let's just jump right in. Please stay tuned to the end for provenance information. I hope you really enjoy it. This first one is called the Sarcophagus with Victories. And according to the museum, the scene on the front of this, carved in high relief, shows two figures of victory holding standards and flanking a large shield decorated with a gorgon's head. As is typical in Roman illustrations of triumphs, figures representing vanquished barbarian prisoners are seated below the central shield. The symbolism of the whole celebrates the victory of life over death. The marble comes from a quarry on the Greek island of Thassos, and the piece was carved in roughly 210 AD. The second one is called the Sarcophagus with Dionysus and Ariadna, and according to the museum, it shows Dionysus approaching the sleeping Ariadna on the island of Naxos. He is surrounded by his attendants, including satyrs, maneads, and multiple figures of Pan. To the right, Ariadne lies with her head in the lap of Thanatos, god of the dead. Eros draws Dionysus towards the maiden, who will be released from her death-like state and marry him. Dionysus' ability to overcome death makes this appropriate imagery for a sarcophagus. The lid depicting Eros figures participating in the wine harvest is a later addition. The marble comes from a quarry on the island of Marmara in Turkey, and the object dates to between 190 and 200 AD. This third one is called the sarcophagus with the triumph of Dionysus, and according to the museum, it shows the triumphal march of Dionysus, or Bacchus in Rome, through India, which was equated with the triumph of the deceased over death. On the left, Dionysus rides in a chariot pulled by panthers. Preceding him is a procession of his followers and exotic animals, including lions, elephants, and even a giraffe. Many of the animals depicted had special significance in the mystery cult of Dionysus Sabasius. On the lid is the birth of Dionysus and his reception by nymphs, shown between satyr heads. The enormous attention to detail on the sarcophagus exemplifies the talents of the best Roman relief carvers. The marble comes from a Greek island of Thassos, and it was carved in roughly 190 AD. 
This fourth piece is called the sarcophagus depicting Castor and Pollux seizing the daughters of Loisippus. And according to the museum, it shows the twins Castor and Pollux, known together as the Dioscuri, abducting the maidens amid a scene of confusion. The Romans believed that the abduction of these mortal women by the twins represented the transition of the deceased from the human realm to that of the divine immortals. On the lid are victories sacrificing bulls on either side of a vase-like cult object. On the ends, the Dioscuri carry off the women in their chariot. The marble comes from Mamara in Turkey, and it was carved in roughly 160 AD. This fifth piece is called the sarcophagus depicting the birth of Dionysus, and according to the museum, it depicts the birth of Dionysus, or Bacchus. At the left, the newborn god is nursed by a nymph and surrounded by Selenus, his future teacher, and other attendants, including one preparing a basin for the child's first bath. A panther cub is seated nearby. To the right, satyrs and maenads, including a drunken old man, celebrate the birth. On the lid, satyrs and maenads feast at a banquet. On the sides of the lid, Dionysus's panther drinks from an overturned wine vessel. The coffin is small, as if made for a child. The marble comes from the Greek island of Thassos, and the item was carved between 150 and 160 AD. The sixth sarcophagus is called the Garland Sarcophagus, and according to the museum, this one was carved on all four sides in high relief. Garlands held by winged goddesses or personifications on the corners and Eros figures on the sides support the busts of a crowned deity on the left and a young girl on the right. The sarcophagus was probably intended for her. In the center, on both the front and back, is a theatrical mask, on this side tragedy and on the other side comedy. Medusa heads decorate the ends. The lid takes the form of a temple roof with a pediment at each end. The sarcophagus can be traced to a particular workshop active near the ancient quarry of Dokimion in Phrygia in Asia Minor, Turkey, and it was carved between 150 and 180 AD. The seventh and last work of art is called the Sarcophagus with Griffins, and according to the museum, panther griffins face one another, each raising a paw towards a central vase-like object used in the cult of Dionysus Sabasius. The motif is well known from imperial temples, where it appears as a symbol of deification and ascension to heaven. This imperial illusion reflects the high aspirations of the family to whom the tomb belongs. Along the lid, Eros figures ride fantastical sea creatures. The marble source was not listed, but this item was carved between 140 and 170 AD. Here I walk around the incredible room full of energy and artistic expression, showing all the sarcophagi in order. Let's soak it all in. The museum lists all seven of these sarcophagi as being found in the Via Piave, Rome, which is due north of the Baths of Diocletian and next to the Villa Bonaparte. Here are some pictures from a different tomb on the outskirts of Rome to give you an idea of how one looks inside. 
The sarcophagi just featured in this video were located in a mausoleum called the Licinian Tomb, excavated in 1884 to 1885 during new construction works with numerous other objects including altars and portrait heads. The occupants have been identified as descendants of Pompey the Great, whose bust from that tomb is now in Copenhagen, Denmark, seen here, and Marcus Licinius Crassus, both towering general statesmen and triumvirs at the end of the Roman Republic, who were ultimately eclipsed by Julius Caesar. The items from the tomb are listed as found by Clemente Mariani, a building contractor for Banca Italia. Objects found inside that were not donated to the Italian state were sold to a Vatican priest who was also an art collector. Henry Walters, a businessman from Baltimore, purchased these sarcophagi and other items from that priest in 1902 for an enormous sum and had them shipped off to the U.S., all done legally. Please let me know in the comments below which of these that were highlighted is your favorite. Well, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.